So tell me, Warren, how do you think the debate went tonight? Look, I, I think it went okay. I, I, I would have preferred if there wasn't so much noise in the audience, because sometimes it was hard to hear the questions, and uh, I do think that you need to afford each of the speakers an opportunity to be able to very clear in their message, I mean, that helps people determine where, where they're going. But the thing that upset me, I guess, was that lady with the wheels, with, with the uh, walking stick, and, 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 and I guess that, that was reflective across the room. I looked at so many different groups there, and I think a lot of that noise was the frustration. It wasn't so much anger, it wasn't so much just being mischievous. I think there's an absolute there's an absolute element of frustration because nobody's listening to them. And it's it's across the political spectrum up in this place now for a couple of years. People will not be listened to. And I think that's sad. I think that is seriously sad and it's something that needs to be addressed. And I think there's a strong message there for all the elected representatives. It's about bloody time that they open the doors to the public because that's what they're there for. They may not fix all the problems, but at least if people feel they're being listened to, there's a good chance that you know they'll be satisfied with that. They might not like all of the outcomes, but at least they feel that they've had an opportunity to express a view and somebody's tried. So at the end of the day, I mean, it's up to the individuals as to whether or not, uh, uh, who they're gonna vote for. I, I would never ask, unlike Jim who says, you know, I want you to vote for me, I'd never ask that. However, I remind people at the end of the day, whether it be Abbott or, or Gillard, they all go home after the election, and it's me and Jim that are sitting here. We're the ones that are going to have to represent the community, and people have to make an assessment as to whether or not who's going to, or who's going to be the most effective. And uh, you know, I'll leave that in their corner. Good. So Jim, here we are at the mobile office. Tell me, what did you think of the debate last night? Yeah, no, it was good to get along there and take questions from the audience and be able to talk about my plans to strengthen and diversify our local economy, what we've done to support jobs. There's a lot more work to be done, and I'm asking people to support me and my plans for the future. Mm, and uh, it was a very boisterous audience. How did you uh, take that? Yeah, it was a boisterous audience, but, you know, politics is about people having a say. And what I was talking about are things like, you know, what we're going to do to diversify the economy into mining industry, what we're doing to expand the education sector, the Southern Access Road. We're down here in the southern suburbs. People want to know that if they vote for me, they get the Southern Access Road upgraded. If they vote for Warren Inch, they'll get a lot of talk, but no action on the Southern Access Road. We've got a GP super clinic down here. That's really important. We've got our cancer facilities being improved at Cairns Base. They're things I've delivered. They're things that I think uh, demonstrate that I can get things done, but we need to strengthen and diversify our local economy, the mining sector, education sector. There's a lot more work that we can do in that area, and that's what I'm committed to do if I'm re-elected on the 21st of August. And uh, what, what's uh, Warren Inch's plans for, this, for the next uh, three years if he becomes the member? Well, I mean, one of the, fe the feedback that I've got is that Warren didn't really outline a, a clear plan for the future, and you know, I don't think he really answered that diversification question. I mean, I'm asking people to really look at my track record over the last two and a half years and, and put it up against his for 12 years. This economy was too narrow when the global financial crisis hit, and for that reason we were hard hit. We needed economic stimulus to, be, to come into this economy. We've done that to support the tourism and construction industries, but we've got to diversify this region and we've got to make it a wonderful place to live. And that's about investments in education, investments in health, upgrading infrastructure like our local roads and building the national broadband network. That's what they'll get if they vote for me on the 21st of August. Great. Have a great campaign. We'll see you in a, another time. Thanks, Jim. Thank you.